How's it going? This is OXDF, and today I'm looking at the Hack the Box Cyber Santa is Coming to Town CTF going on at the beginning of December this year. Uh, I'm going to look at Baby APT in the forensics category. Uh, so it's the most wonderful time of the year, but not for Santa's IR team. Uh, Santa went digital. Everyone can write him a letter and using his brand new website. Apparently an APT group hacked their way into the server and destroyed his present list. Can you investigate what happened? Uh, this challenge has a downloadable part. So uh, that's this right here. I've actually already downloaded it to get it into my VM. Uh, see here. So, uh, and that's as far as I've gotten so far. So now we're, we're live. Let's open it up and take a look and see what we have. Um, looks like a PCAP file. Yep, normal looking packet capture. So I'm going to go ahead and open that in Wireshark. If I can type Wireshark. And see what we have. Um, and before I like dive in at all, I always like to take a look at the statistics of the conversations and get a feel for what's potentially going on. Um, so IP wise, it looks like a single IP here, uh, 10 0 2 15, talking to a handful of server or various other things. Um, no IPv6. And then, yeah, same thing here. So there's eight different uh, IP, IPs that this host is talking to, and there's 31 different TCP conversations. Um, there's a bunch of 443 traffic in here that's, um, that's happening. Um, but I will notice there's a bunch of this traffic to 8080, which is more potentially useful. Um, here's some traffic to 80 as well. Um, so that's, that's really all I needed to do here, just get a feel for what I'm looking at. Uh, there's three UDP sessions. Those are going to be... DNS lookups, you can see here, port 53. Uh, and all of them are going from uh, this 10.0.2.15 over to the 192.168.1.1, which is probably the DNS server. Yep, because, yeah, we're going from random ports to port 53. So um, we can take a look at the DNS real quick if we just type DNS and see what we have. Um, I don't think this, this looks like standard background material, right? Look, someone's running Firefox and it's just making queries to uh, that kind of, Stuff, so I don't think we have anything interesting going on there. Um, so I'm not going to stress about the DNS. Um, for something as short as even, you know, 30, I think what did I say, 30 something streams, I'm just going to take a look and step through them. That's the easiest way to take a look. Um, so here's some uh, some query to oscpdigicert.com. That's some kind of uh, certificate checking. I don't really care about that. Um, there's some sort of encrypted conversation here. I'm going to skip through that for now. Um, that's not to say the encrypted stuff couldn't be important, but at least right now for an initial triage, I'm just going to step through and look and see what I can find unencrypted. Um, so here I've got another OSCP Digicert. Not too interesting. Um, okay, so here I have a, a git of Christmas wishlist. Christmas wishlist. No host name. No URL or domain. That's interesting. But um, on port 8080 and uh, something coming back. Um, one thing that's worth knowing, so, you know, this is in plain text, but you can also see that the server is returning content encoding gzip. So this is uh, encoded. Um, there's a few things we can do here. Um, one, let's see, probably the harder way. We could jump, put this as a hex dump and we can copy this out. Copy and let's open up uh, CyberChef. I don't actually know if this is going to work or not, but we'll give it a try. Uh, paste it in here, and we can do from hex dump. And that should convert it back to binary. Oh, is it just... Oh, yeah, okay. So I don't... Interesting. I don't actually want... I just want the payload part. Um, I wonder if we can get rid of that somehow. Um, let's come over here and change it from hex... This might be an impractical solution. Um, so we're going from zero to, we want to cut down to these nulls, right? We're going to cut down to this. The 0D0A, 0D0A is the end of the headers, two lines. So that's 210. Uh, this is 208, 9A, B, C, D. So 210, D, 210, 21D. Um, I wonder if there's a good way to cut this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do that in CyberChef. So um, we are going to from hex dump this. We get the plain text here. We'll save this to a file. We're going, we're going all over the place here right now, but um, save this to a file. Um, if we now move, um, 
downloads download.dat to text dump. And we want to get, uh, if we look at this now, it's just a mess. Um, but um, we might even be able to, let's see, a shift V and I can come down here and select all these lines I don't want and delete and get rid of that. And now let's come back in here and we will open up a file as input. Again, I don't actually know if this is going to work, but we're going to give it a try. There's hex dump. And now we will, this is not from hex dump anymore. Um, it is from hex. And maybe we have the raw stuff here. Let's see. So now what we need to do is gzip, g unzip really. No, that didn't work. Okay. That, that was an interesting experiment. Um, ignore my, ignore that for now. Um, I, I bet we could do that somehow, but let's, let's do it an easier way. Um, if you come here into, um, so, you know, right now we've, so we're in TCP stream three, which means this filter is applied here. So all these packets are TCP stream three. Um, you know, the packets that are happening here. Um, so you have our TCP handshake, sin, sin, x, sin, and then here's the actual get request. Um, if you look down here in the bottom, you can see there's the get requests in a hex dump. Um, and then there's some acts going on and then the server actually responds here. And this is the encrypted, this is the data, the, um, the raw data that's gzip compressed. And so, um, Wireshark will break this out for you. If you come down here to the very bottom, so I'm in the hypertext, the HTTP section, the very bottom, line-based data, 232 lines. And now here's the raw data that it's gzip decompressed. Um, and you can see it here. So here's the actual site that uh, it's being seen in this PCAP. Um, so that's not too interesting in this case, but just good to know you can do. Um, sorry for the long tangent, let's keep going. Um, uh, let's get this out of hex dump mode, just back to ASCII. Um, so here, this is an interesting one um, because I see there's some sort of Drupal thing going on here. And uh, this just looks very exploity. In fact, so you, you have a form ID. Uh, what if this is Drupal Geddon? Um, we could do some research and figure that out, but um, very quickly we can say, um, I've got a command here, ID, and I see the result coming back of www data. So clearly we have command execution going on here. So that's, that's, we found the entry point to Santa's problems. Um, let's see this, this stream is 443. So we're not going to get much out of it. Um, let's keep going. Let's move this a little so we can see the host number. So 443 again, so this is encrypted. Um, so here we have another one um, to the same thing with the same kind of data. And this time, we are running a curl to this uh, URL and we're saving it as bg.php. Uh, see if that's a real thing. Oops, I don't need the curl in there. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, and that is, it certainly looks like a web shell. Um, if if uh, is not empty, post command, execute that and get the command and then down here, web server post if is set command, then print the results. So very simple web shell. Um, it's just using PHP to run commands. Um, and so it's getting it and it's saving it as bg.php. Now we have a request to bg.php. Um, in this case, no command is given. So it's probably just loading it. Um, I wonder if there's a form down, oh yeah, there's a form down here, which will actually do a post um, to command so that we can Embedding our next one. Okay, Favicon. Not interesting. Um, this looks like some more random 443 traffic to a different host, so we don't have to worry about that. Or we, we're going to under uh, down prioritize that now. Here we are back to our 192.168 host. Um, this time we are doing a cat of Etsy password, and we get back so gzip encrypted or encoded data. Um, not encrypted. So we can, we can come down here and see if it actually, so you, we're in a hypertext transfer protocol, we're in the line-based text data, and we're down here. The web shell is going to, we know it puts the output at the bottom, and there's the output of an Etsy password file. So we got the Etsy password file for the host. Uh, let's continue to step through here. Um, different host, don't seem to, not going to worry about it for now. Different host, different host, different host, different host. Okay. 
could do a filter probably on just um, 192.168 address, but this seems like interesting for now. Okay, so here we're running the groups command. Um, I'm gonna just keep looking at the output because I don't exactly know where I'm looking. For. All I all I know is I'm looking for what's going on. So let's see if we can find the output. So again, I came here to the response, the 200 OK response, and at the very bottom here, dub 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 data is the groups. OK, that's not surprising. Keep stepping through ls minus la. Um, grab this and see what the result of that is. So we have clearly the file system here. Um, see the there's the most of it's owned by root but the bg.php is owned by www data um nothing particularly interesting there okay let's keep stepping all right so we got uh let's go ahead and i'm just going to use burp, burp here because that's an easy url decode um next next come here um you get pretty used to reading this kind of stuff but just for the sake of Demonstration, especially since this is a beginner level CDF, we can paste this into decoder and decode as a URL. Sorry, the text is tiny here, um, but that says ls minus la var www html site default files. So, so if that's what it's it's in the stream here, we see that's what the command is trying to run is ls of that directory. Um, down here, let's get the response. Go to the bottom, and there is the directory. Um, I wonder what this config is. Uh, that might be interesting. We'll come back to that if we need to. Um, okay, so here we have a, we have another command being run. Let's grab that. Let's go to burp. Um, let's quickly go to user options, display, font size 18. Wow, that got, that got bigger. Uh, let's see, decoder. Okay, that's probably better. Um, still maybe a little small, but at least you have a chance of reading it. Okay, so remove the SQLite database in that thing and echo uh, all this stuff into dev null and ls that directory. Uh, so of course, I'm very curious to know what this stuff is. Um, what's the best way to do that? Let's grab the stuff. paste it in here, and now we'll decode as base64. And we found the flag. Um, so anytime you see, see somebody echoing something to dev null, that's a good chance that it uh, might be interesting. Um, so, and, and how did I, I guess maybe I should say, again, this is a kind of a beginner CTF. How did I know this was base64? Um, one, when you're doing CTFs, um, base64 is just a really common encoding. Um, you don't want to, if they had, if the hack the box team had just put the flag, you know, HTB squiggly bracket, okay, now, blah, blah, blah. Um, if they had just put that into the PCAP, simply just doing a grep on HTB squiggly would have returned that uh, flag. In fact, I can show you, um, I think, let's, let's, let's do another demo here, test this. Um, if I do a grep on that, on, what was I looking for? Um, knock the box CTF, baby. Uh, it matches. If I do a grep minus A, I can see right here. Here is the here is the command string where this is running. Um, and so if this had just been echo the flag, um, then it would have been very easy to get. I wouldn't have to do any actual forensics. So um, putting things in, in an encoded way is a pretty typical thing. Um, base64 is by far the most common encoding. Um, You'll recognize it because it's going to be uppercase, lowercase, numbers, uh, plus, slash, and then at the end there might be padding. Um, so uh, padding being equal signs, somewhere zero, one, or two equal signs. Um, <clears throat> there are other kinds of encoding you might run into, um, like something like base32 is something you only are going to see in CTFs probably, but you know it's all upper or lowercase numbers and... Um, you know, you, your padding can be anywhere from, I think it's zero to five e or six equals. Um, so anyway, when I see something like that, uh, that's where I come over here. And in fact, I could just copy this. You can do a, you can do it right here uh, into base 64 minus D, and then there's the result. So the base 64 program will do code it for you. Um, but anyway, um, let's just go through the rest of this PK. Let's look at the result first and see. So it did an LS of, um, 
Oh, I already got rid of it. I did an ls of that directory. I'm guessing that's what we'll see if we come down to the 200 OK. There it is. Um, that's interesting, I thought. Oh, here we go. 200 OK. OK. Oh, it does. Hmm, OK, let's keep going. Let's see if anything else interesting happens here. Oh, no, that's the end of the PCAP. That's the end of the PCAP, so. Um, so if we found it, that's what it does. It's, um, it's getting rid of Santa's, um, getting rid of his SQLite database. And, uh, yeah, then that's all, that's what's left. Um, so that was interesting. And, uh, thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll talk to you next time.